When we enter into this place of worship, we enter into God's sanctuary. Christ comes here when we gather. And it is here that we will find salvation. So let us begin our worship today as we stand to sing hymn number 707. standing turn to page 139 for the liturgy for national occasions
Praise the Lord, all you nations. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live upon it. Let all people everywhere know that the supreme God has power over the human kingdom and that he can give it to anyone he chooses, even to the least important. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Praise the Lord. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. Almighty God, ruler of nations, to whose grace we owe the manifold blessings of this land. We confess that in many ways we have turned aside from your commandments, and it is because of your steadfast love that we are not consumed. You offer us mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against you, and have not obeyed your command to walk in your laws which you have set before us. We pray, Lord, that you will guide and bless all who are in places of authority. Protect them from violence and fill the hearts of the people with respect and love for them, because you have established their authority. Raise up for us leaders who will carry out all your purpose, and in patience and courage will depend on you. Save your people and bless your heritage. Make of this nation an instrument for the promotion of peace, freedom, and righteousness. May it be a haven for the oppressed of other lands, a home of happiness for all who dwell within its borders. And may our commitment to liberty and justice for all be preserved for the generations to come. Hear us, gracious Lord and God. Guide us and our leaders through the spirit of Christ's love as we struggle with matters of teaching and learning, home and family, health and security, work and justice. Turn the hearts of all people to you that they may seek eternal life through Jesus Christ, who redeems us and our world. Hear us, gracious Lord and God. Grant wisdom to those who are of the family of faith. Enable us to accept the authority of government for your sake, ready for every good work, abstaining from every form of evil, and paying to all whatever is due them. As citizens of this nation, may we bring credit to our Savior in all we do. Hear us, gracious Lord and God. Grant to the people of this and all other lands a love of peace and order, that the nations shall learn war no more. Hasten the day when the kingdom of the world shall become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. Hear us, gracious Lord and God. Amen. Please stand.
Please be seated. Roger Crass to sing uh, God Bless America for us. And you are invited on the second time through to stand and sing along. Please be seated. Thank you, Roger and Peggy. I'd like to invite our young people to come up and join me, please. Good morning. So uh, I had a couple people at junior camp. Yeah, how was it, guys? Was it good? What was the best part? Mm. Playing soccer. Oh, you do that here at home, so yeah. So did you go on a creek walk? No, didn't. Oh, okay. Well, just uh, for those who we have uh, church camps going on all summer long, and our junior camp, which is third through fifth graders. We're uh, down at Mount Morris, and uh, understand they had a wonderful time, and we're just so grateful for those opportunities for them. So glad you had a good week. So uh, anybody got big plans for the 4th tomorrow? Huh? What do you guys do? Henry? Oh, you got to go see your cousins this weekend. That's great. So is anybody going to go to a fireworks? Huh? Yeah. Well, you're going to go down to the park here in town? Yeah. Yeah. So I, when I was um, your age, I remember that fireworks part was my favorite part of the 4th of July. Um, you know, that was is probably the thing that I look forward to the most. Um, as I've gotten a little older in life, though, I've gotten to the point where uh, I uh, try to always make sure, like I do on all holidays. You know, we have lots of holidays, and sometimes... Uh, we think it's just an opportunity to eat and see family, but we need to remember that there's a reason for those holidays. Um, and it wasn't until I got older that I got to travel the world a little bit and go to some different places that I came to really appreciate the 4th of July. Because uh, when I went to those places, I learned to remember how blessed I am to live here. So, 
When you see that big fireworks boom happen, try, just try for me, try to remember tomorrow when all that stuff's going off and it's beautiful, that you take a moment um, and think about the fact that when you go, ooh, and ah, you know how everybody does that? You ever notice that ooh, ah? Well, part of that ooing and ah needs to be a sense of gratitude because you have been blessed to live in a, such a wonderful country. Um, and a lot of times, uh, people spend a lot of time tearing down or complaining about what is wrong with our nation rather than focusing on the fact that there is so much that's right. So let's have a prayer together. Lord, we uh, ask for your blessing to be on our children today. Uh, we are grateful for camp experiences. We are uh, grateful for the opportunities to be with family and to have a holiday weekend. Uh, but we also pray that for all of us, we will remember to take the time to count our blessings and to be thankful for the nation we live in. We offer these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for coming up. We do indeed have much to be grateful for, and we should uh, consider the blessings that God has given us that we get to live in this wonderful country. So let us celebrate that as we bring our offerings this morning. Would our ushers please serve us as we worship our Lord with our tithes and our offerings.
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we bring you these small gifts and acknowledgement of the many blessings that you have given us. We sometimes take for granted that the circumstances into which we were born and the place into which we were born in this great nation greatly affects the way that we can live and enjoy life. And so we give you thanks for those blessings this morning. We realize that there are those in this world who do not enjoy the freedoms and the luxuries that we do. We ask that you would touch all in this world and that you would bring them prosperity and peace and that all of them might know your Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray this morning. We would ask also that you continue to be with Lee Peterson as he recovers and with Chris as she is with him, that you bring them healing and peace as well, and that you be with Alice Sodoman as she recovers from her hospital stay. We ask these things in the name of our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. 
Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Amid the uh, usual activities for being a pastor in the week, whether it's go visiting people in the hospital or premarital counseling sessions or what I enjoy doing in the summer, it's playing catch-up and all the things that have gotten away from me, I have to tell you I had a big accomplishment this week. I finally replaced the broken, broken blinds in my office. Now that's a big accomplishment. I want you to appreciate this. It's only taken me about seven years to get around to do this. Um, So uh, I was pretty excited because I was able to check that off of my summer to-do list. This uh, little project reminded me that really if you want to get anything done around this church building, uh, you will eventually have to begin that process in reader's office. Now, the reason for this is that because right next to his desk, reader is the guardian of a great big toolbox. It is a wonderful box, and it has all kinds of tools for all kinds of jobs, large and small. And I'll let you in on a little secret. I've learned over the years, I found out what Reader's favorite tool is in that box. Um, It is a a two-and-a-half-pound sledgehammer. (laughs) Because Reader, like every other farmer I've ever known, has a deep, deep belief that when you're working on something and, and all else fails... The one thing that that you do is you take that two-and-a-half-pound sledgehammer and you whack it a couple of times. Now, the thing is, it may not fix it or it may not get whatever's broken to start working, but regardless, it makes you feel better. Now that I have set up all the hammer swingers in the world, myself included, as a straw man to be knocked down, I'd like to remind all of us that uh, it is important to have the right tools for the job. It is important to know how to use the right tools for the right purpose. And as people of faith, we need to be reminded sometimes that when it comes to living a life of grace and love in Jesus, that we need to be mindful of how we do it, how we live it. Our scriptural lesson today is a strong reminder that in dealing with others, particularly with those who are struggling, that we need to be first of a humble mindset. We need to be mindful of our own struggles. We need to be honest and understand what in this world is truly our responsibility and what is not. Our passage today is about living in and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. It is practical advice that the Apostle Paul was giving the Galatians because they've been struggling. Uh, Prior to sending this letter, what had happened in uh, Galatia is that some Church leaders had shown up from outside, and they brought a teaching and provided it to the Galatians, say, hey, you know, if you're truly going to be Christians, then these are all these lists of rules and steps, rules and regulations that you need to have concerning your spiritual lives. Now, this new teaching had gotten them focused on all of those rules, so, much, so focused on all the degrees and the qualifications that the Apostle Paul felt like he needed to write them and remind them that the penultimate concern, the most important thing that they needed to keep in their hearts was their relationship with Jesus. Humans are humans, ancient or modern. We like rules and we like guidelines. They create order. Uh, we like progress. We like to have a sense of control. You know, it's interesting, if you go to Google and you type in the words, steps to a better, look at the list that comes up, all of the different things you can find out. The page will just fill up with the steps you can take for anything that you could possibly imagine. Steps to have better health, skin, sleep, credit, relationships, parenting. Or type in the words, steps to becoming, becoming happier, Becoming a millionaire, becoming thinner, 
becoming a leader. We can be obsessed with all these technical things that will help us to get to where we wish to be, but we can forget that becoming first begins in our hearts. Being better begins in our souls. Paul was reminding the Galatians that all of these steps, these new teachers were giving to them, were external roles that they could work at. But the truth remains is that God is concerned about the conditions of our heart. Eugene Peterson translated the passage that Christine read for us today this way. He writes, Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. And then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself to others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. I love that last part. You must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Quaker author Parker Palmer writes about how each of us uh, lives with an inner and an outer reality. Uh, When we are little children, those parts of us flow out very easily. Having just uh, spent some significant time with a two-year-old, I was reminded about that. I'd forgotten it. It's amazing at that age that the expressions of love and crankiness, joy and fear, doing the right thing and being willfully naughty can all happen within 30 seconds. (laughs) But what happens, Parker points out, is that as we get older, we we begin to wall off our inner self. We uh, begin to build up a shell. And so we keep inside our fears and our feelings. We begin to protect our true self. And we become very busy with creating an image that we put out for everyone else. The thing is, is that, that that makes us then consumed with trying to look attractive, successful, and being right. We become consumed with that image while we tend then to forget to attend to those things that are hidden, to be honest about our fears, to be true to our true self. Paul says... Help those who are caught in sin, but watch yourself so that you are not tempted. He's bringing into question this reality about what our outward image is and what our true inner motivations are. You see, the temptation is our eagerness to bolster up that outer image as we judge the apparent failures of others. The temptation is to look good because we are doing what is right rather than to do good, because it is right. Paul writes, don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself to others. Frankly, friends, there are times that I am mystified as why people that I know and love make some of the choices that they make in life. But I'm certain that they have the same feeling about me. And to be quite honest, There are some times that I'm mystified about the choices that I make myself. Rather than being consumed with making judgments, we need to live in the humility of faith. Paul calls us today to remember to apply the tools of our faith first to ourselves. Because the gospel of love demands this. This passage is wonderful because it says, it reminds us, it says, we reap what we sow. And so what we need to be sowing first is that we do good in this world out of this sense of humility, out of this sense of who we are and our deepest inner being, as we are loved and cherished by a God who would give all of himself that we might have him, that we might be whole, that we might have eternal life. It is that gift that we are reminded of when we come to this table this morning. And what a blessing it is. Amen. Our service for Holy Communion this morning is found in uh, page 183 in the Moravian Book of Worship. In the Moravian Church we practice an open communion. That means all who are here are welcome to join with us in this celebration. 
If you're a child and you are not a member of this church, but you take communion in another congregation, you are welcome to join with us. We ask that our children go through our communion training program. And just a word about how we serve communion. The elements will be brought to you, and you're to stand with everyone in your pew and receive them, whether it's the bread or the cup. And then we ask that you hold on to them until all of the congregation is served, and then we partake together. This is a simple reminder for us that our faith is a faith lived with others. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us pray. God of grace and love, we give you thanks as we join together at this table. Lord, we are grateful for the gift that we have in your son, Jesus. And we pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please be seated.
Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. By your divine presence, by the holy sacraments, by all the merits of your life, sufferings, death, and resurrection. Bless and comfort us, gracious Lord and God. Amen. In the same way, after supper, our Lord took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Please be seated. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, drink from this, all of you. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. <laughs> 